Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. I'm Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to talk about an energy transition between different orbits. Okay, so here's the deal. All right, so if I were doing uh, the Bohr model of the atom, which is not the model we use today at all, but it is easy to conceptualize. And so we're going to go ahead and do it even though it's an awful way of thinking about this, and I'm gonna draw an awful version of the Bohr model just to tell you that it's really a bad way to conceptualize this. All right, it's a horrible version of the Bohr model. You have wonderful versions in the midst of your book. So look at those. This is even bad for me, but that's okay. We're gonna work with it. All right, so the idea here, while I'm throwing markers around, is that basically electrons exist at the lowest energy state they can. That's called the ground state, okay? And that's true of the rest of the universe as well. The universe likes to exist at the lowest energy state it can. So what happens is that sometimes electrons get excited. And what is that gonna look like? Well, when they get excited, they basically go to a higher energy state, right? And then they exist up here for a little bit. Here's my electron, okay? When they get excited, that process is called excitation. Woohoo! And it requires energy to make this happen. Oh, not electrons. It requires, yeah, it requires electrons, but it requires energy. Okay. So excitation goes from lower energy levels, which are closest to the nucleus in the Bohr model, to higher energy levels. Okay. Eventually, that electron is going to have to come back down to the original energy state, okay? And that process is called relaxation. It relaxes, and when that happens, it emits energy. And from Planck's uh, equation, we can find out that, in fact, when it emits energy, it, it can emit it at a certain wavelength. All right, that is fabulous for us because that means that we can calculate all kinds of um, numbers from this. Okay, what can we calculate then? We can calculate how much energy was emitted. Okay, so um, you, if I wanna calculate the energy emitted between two states, I'm gonna use the Rydberg equation Rydberg actually came up with several different constants. The one we typically use more often than not is 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times the absolute value of the inverse squares, the difference of the inverse squares between the levels. Now, is this exactly how it looks in your book? Probably not. Okay, the reason why it's probably not is because here I'm, I'm calculating an energy change. Remember, energy is assigned sign conventions based off of whether it's being emitted or it's required. So you can basically say, here's the number. I can use this equation to calculate the number. Um, if you are trying to use this equation, you have an energy, and you're trying to find um, one of the ends, then it's a little bit more strack about you figuring out what sign the energy should have in advance. But having said that, we're just gonna calculate, if we're finding the energy, we're just gonna calculate the number and then we're gonna assign a sign convention based off of the fact, or based off of the idea of whether it requires energy, which would then be a plus, that's like endothermic, um, which was a plus or if it emits energy, and if it emits energy, then it's a minus, right? So releasing energy, releasing heat, all of those basically are the same, all right? So in terms of this, we're gonna assign sign conventions after the fact. Okay, so let's find, let's say that our N is equal to four, it goes from N equals four to N equals two, just like I drew over here, okay? My delta E value is gonna be 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th. And in order to calculate this a little bit more easily, you're gonna to have to change this 
into parentheses, right, in your calculator. And not only that, I tend to rewrite this equation because we know that anything that is in the denominator that's to a power could become a negative power in the numerator. So in other words, I can rewrite this as this. And this is a heck of a lot easier to put into your calculator than the other one was. So let's actually plug in numbers here. 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th. And we'll do 2 to the negative 2 power minus 4 to the negative 2 power. And if I calculate this out correctly, Oy. 2 to the negative 2 power minus 4 to the negative 2 power. That becomes 4 point, ooh, look at that, 4.086 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Because this is still joules, right? Joules. Okay. Fabulous. That is a wonderful number. That's exactly the kind of number we want to see. So 4.086 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Great. Now I have two options. All right. My options are I can calculate from here a frequency. If I needed a frequency, I would simply plug this into Planck's equation, Okay, where frequency is new. Or I could find a wavelength directly. And if I wanted to find the wavelength, I would simply plug this into a modified version of Planck's equation that combines Planck's equation and the speed of light equation. OK? Let's do the wavelength. Let's say that we're going to find the wavelength. OK, so if I want to find the wavelength, then I know that delta E is equal to hc over lambda. Lambda, therefore, must be equal to hc over delta E. Remember that, of course, you're going to use h, which is a constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And I already realized that I'm going to, my picture, my picture is getting in my way. So I'm going to erase it. That happens even to the best of us. There we go. I'll let that have a moment. Sorry, I dropped a marker and now I'm kind of panicked that I'm going to fall on it. <laughs> Is that death by your own sword? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. It could be. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. So Planck's. Uh, Remember, Planck's constant is a constant. It should be given to you on exams. If not, you should definitely write it on your card because it's important for the chapter 7, chapter 8 stuff. C is a constant as well. It's the speed of light in meters per second. Again, a constant should be given to you on exams, but definitely write it on your card just in case. And this is times 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. You'll notice that seconds already cancel out. And then my lovely energy here, 4.086 times 10 to the negative 19th. And here, you would see that, indeed, ooh, joules cancel out, seconds cancel out, and I'll get meters. Now, do we measure wavelength in meters most of the time? No, we do not. Most of the time, we measure it in, in fact, um, nanometers. So one meter is equal to a billion nanometers. A billion. It's a heck of a lot of nanometers, which means that you know when we say we're doing things on the nano scale, we're, scale, we're talking about really, really, really small. All right, let's plug all of this in. The way I'm going to put this into my calculator, I'm going to say it out loud because it's important to get a sense of what's going on here. And I just, I just erased my most beautiful energy, which was really stupid. So I'm going to plug that back in. 
All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the way I'm going to plug this into my calculator, I'm going to 6.626 EE negative 34. That's not, negative is not the same as minus, remember, times 2.998 EE8. And the way I plug in this guy is I plug in 1 E9, EE9. Okay, and the reason why I do that is because um, EE means times 10 to the whatever. So if I do 10 times 10 to the 9th, 10 EE9, that'll be actually 10 to the 10th. That's not what I want. And then I'm going to divide that by my lovely energy. And I got a cool number like 486 nanometers. Woo, which is actually in the visible range. How exciting, okay. Oh man, kind of fun. It's like, is that bluish, greenish, greenish blue? Something like that? Okay, so in terms of doing this, we can calculate lots of things based off of just this idea of what jumps in the hydrogen spectrum, because that's what we're basing everything off of, um, that this electron jumped to and from. Awesome. We'll talk next time. Until then, adieu.